Time now for Money Power Politics. In the 2018 election cycle, conservative billionaires Charles and David Koch spent almost 400 million bucks, with 20 million of that dedicated to making sure the tax cuts passed. There are few individuals with more influence in business and politics than these two brothers on your screen. They own roughly 80% of Koch Industries. Now, we hear about their political donations and their lobbying efforts against climate change initiatives, but we rarely hear about how this family got so powerful. In the new book, Cokeland, journalist Christopher Leonard describes how Charles Koch turned this unknown Kansas oil company into a $110 billion empire and how they have infiltrated just about every thread of American life. I want to share this quote. The company is embedded in the hidden infrastructure of everyday life. Millions of people use Coke products without ever seeing Coke's name attached. Joining me now, the author of Coke Land, The Secret Story of Coke Industries and Corporate Power in America, Christopher Leonard, and Charlie Sykes back with me. Christopher, you note that we use Coke products every day and we almost never see their name. What are the products? How did this happen? Well, this company specializes in the kinds of businesses that underpin, underpin civilization. Coke makes fuel, fertilizer, building materials, clothing materials, the sensors in your cell phones. It's the kind of stuff you use every day, but that you never directly purchase, if you will. And the, the profits from this have been stunning. Coke's annual sales, for example, are larger than that of Facebook, Goldman Sachs, and U.S. Steel combined. This is a massive company that affects millions of Americans. Then how on earth do we barely know about them? I want to uh, share a quote from the book when you talk about the secrecy. And you're right, secrecy was a strategic necessity for Koch Industries. Charles Koch did not want to surrender it. He also didn't want to surrender control. He had a specific, clear vision of how to run his company, and he didn't need Wall Street investors to interfere. So was the magic of all this to keep the company private? That's right. And what, what's so interesting to me is the secrecy around this corporation. We know that Coke, for example, very intentionally disguises its political donations. Well, that comes from the business itself. And what I realized is that, that secrecy is strategic for Coke Industries. First of all, this is a company that is really deeply involved in what we would call trading, buying and selling energy supplies, even buying and selling other companies. And when that's your line of work, you really don't want other people to know what you know and to know what you're about to do. So that's why secrecy is so fundamental to this company. Charlie, you have seen this play out in Wisconsin, Wisconsin politics. Put it into context. Well, I mean, obviously, they've been major players in the conservative movement and the rise of the Republican Party. But what's interesting to me also is the way that uh, is the role that they're going to play in the era of Trump, because they've never really got on board with with Donald Trump. And the thing about the the, the Kochs in and I'm talking about their politics in, you know, in contrast to some of the other players like like the Mercers, they do think they actually cared about ideas. And I think that they have been willing to stay at and arm's the length. And cared about what? Just well, the, they, destroying they, they, the system? They bought, they bought into the whole Steve Bannon, uh, you know, Trump sort of uh, worldview. And I think that I, it's interesting to me to know what role the Kochs will play or the Koch, uh, it, the, the uh, infrastructure will play in the Republican Party and the conservative movement post-Donald Trump. Because, again, these guys are hard to kind of... You know, uh, just just you know, put into a box because they're quite libertarian. They're interested in a whole lot of things. Uh, Christopher, you go into much greater detail around how Donald Trump was certainly not the Koch brothers' boy. They considered backing five different Republicans in 2016. None of them were the president. You wrote this. In many ways, Donald Trump posed a greater political threat to Charles Koch's political agenda than Barack Obama. That's a big statement. How? Well, Charles Koch has been patiently working to reshape the Republican Party for 40 years. And his goal, uh, as, as Charlie just said, is to make the Republicans more libertarian with this point of view that government must be limited and government must never intervene in markets. When Donald Trump came along in 2016, he upended that philosophy. Donald Trump clearly believes that government intervention is not only appropriate but desirable. I mean, just look at the tariffs, look at the trade war. Donald Trump is seeking to reshape the Republican Party now in his own image, which is this so-called America First agenda. It is very clear that the America First agenda 
is anathema to the Koch network. So there really is a struggle going on right now. There, there's a fight for control of the future of the Republican Party. And I think the Koch network realizes that if Donald Trump wins re-election, he could reshape the Republican agenda for a generation. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.